When thinking about love, we tend to think of all those things that are nice and compassionate, right? Things which avoid hurting another person's feelings. Things which actually make another person feel good, correct? I mean, isn't it imperative that we play nice with others? And yet, is that all there is to love? Being nice? Or is there something more? Is there something else we need to learn that will help us to see that love runs much deeper than mere niceties? Oh, that is what we're going to explore here in this video. Now, my name is Charles, and this is a simple, not shallow video. A video for those who want a deeper faith, not a confusing one. And that is what our name is all about, keeping faith in Christ simple. Well, simple enough that a child like me can understand it, and yet, not so shallow that when the storms of life hit, our faith is forced to run aground. So we want our faith to be like a good cup of coffee. Simple, strong, full of flavor, and richly satisfying. Hmm. It's a very good cup of coffee, by the way. So here we go. Now being nice, so, right out of the gate, you might be asking yourself, Charles, what's the big deal about being nice? Shouldn't we as Christians be nice to folks? I mean, being nice to people is a good thing, right? Well, it can be, yes. But I have far too often found that being nice is simply the good that is not good enough. That it is actually the good that has become the enemy of the best. Let me explain. See, I have found that love so far exceeds being nice. Well, as a glacier has so far exceeded being a mere piece of shaved ice. See, there is no comparison. See, Oswald Chambers once said something that was quite profound. Well, he said a lot of things that were quite profound, but he said that lust counterfeits love as personality counterfeits character. And I think that the same thing can be said about being nice, though it counterfeits both love and character. For being nice merely involves actions taken, whether we mean them or not. Love, on the other hand, is an inner motivation that leads us to mean them whether we're feeling like it or not. And that is a very profound difference. See, the first leads you to being a pleasing and agreeable person. The second to actually being caring, compassionate, and honest. The first leads you to being respectable. The second to showing respect to everyone. Well, the first leads you to being civil to those who have mistreated you. The second, to actually doing good to those who hate you. Now the first may lead you to politely say nothing when an evil is done to you or you are insulted. The second actually leads you to bless those who are doing these things to you. Are you beginning to see the difference? Now, here is an interesting thought. Being nice can actually be both obnoxious and repugnant if these niceties are not motivated by love. I mean, in 1 Corinthians 13, we are told that if keeping God's religious laws without love are both meaningless and obnoxious, then why wouldn't mere trifling niceties be so as well? I mean, well, haven't you ever wished someone would just stop it when you knew their civility was empty and hollow, a mere sham? I have, for that is the truest of hypocrisies. Now, don't misunderstand me. Treating people with respect, dignity, integrity, and honesty is vitally important. Having tact when dealing with others is of paramount importance. All of these things are the loving thing to do. And yet, all of these things are much weightier matters than merely being pleasing and agreeable to others. Indeed, 
I have often grown the most when dealing with those who, while showing me respect and treating me with dignity, were neither being very agreeable or very pleasing to me. Oh, they were being very tactful and they were being honest, but they were not being nice. See, being nice is a social limitation on behavior. Being loving is the behavioral empowerment that we need from God in order to help others find abundant life. Well, allow me to offer to you, uh, for your consideration, a couple of very interesting passages that I've stumbled upon in which our loving Lord, Jesus, says and does things that don't sound very nice, though as we know, Jesus was always in God the Father's love and always did what the Father wanted him to do. And since we know that God is love, Jesus was always loving in all that he did. So here are the passages in no particular order. The first passage reads, but Jesus did not entrust himself to them because he knew everyone and because he didn't need for anyone to testify concerning man. For he himself knew what was in a man. Now what an intriguing passage that is. Here, the one who is the embodiment of love does not entrust himself to those he says he loves. Now how is that nice, to not trust those you say you love? Doesn't that make your head spin? Though, as we noted earlier, love does make honest assessments and requires no more of the one loved than what he or she is capable of giving. See, this is honesty. This is integrity. This is the giving of dignity. But this has nothing to do with being nice. Now, if that passage has given you cause to pause, then linger over this one. Jesus says, I now send you out as sheep among the wolves. So therefore, be wise as serpents, be harmless as doves, but beware of men. But beware of men. That is also not such a nice statement, is it? Though love does protect and prepare the ones loved, and it always gives honest assessments of everyone involved yet it bears no grudges. See, be as wise as a serpent and as harmless as a dove. Be wise, be harmless, and beware. To be loving, then, is to be cautious. To be loving, then, is to be wise. To be loving, then, is to be both innocent and harmless. How intriguing is that? But wait, there's more. You see, Jesus, immediately after issuing a warning against hypocrisy and condemning those who practice lesser evils than you yourself do, went on to say something that wasn't exactly nice sounding. He says, don't give what is holy to the dogs, neither throw your pearls before the pigs, lest perhaps they trample them under their feet and then turn around and tear you to pieces. See, that really doesn't sound like such a nice thing to say, does it? I mean, is it not loving to share Jesus with others? Yes, but apparently there is something deeper being said about what it means to love. Apparently, there is some wisdom needed in sharing holy things and loving others. Apparently, to love, truly is not some superficial, warm, fuzzy gloss for our actions. Love, it now truly seems, does not belong to the poet, to the coward, or to the one who plays nice. Now, because we're getting just a little bit long here, we'll leave a fuller explanation of that passage about the pigs that trample the pearls and whatnot for a different video. But for now, it is enough to see that there is more to God's love than merely being nice. And that sometimes being nice can actually get in the way 
of sharing God's love. So for now, my prayer for you is that you will begin to pray, asking God to teach you how to love, to give you the wisdom needed to love simply, wisely, and well to stay out of the shallows and to journey forth onto the depths of God's love, to learn how to love that you may stop being merely nice, for that is where true life is found. Well, what do you think? Please tell me in the comment section below. Also, in the description box below, I will list all the Bible passages that I referenced in the order that I referenced them. That way, you can check me out, make sure I'm not making any of this up or that I'm completely out in left field. For while I am left-handed, I really don't like being in left field. <laughs> and if you like this video, please click that like and the subscribe button and then make sure to tag that gray notification bell and tell YouTube that you want to be notified each time a new video is posted. Also, something very exciting. We now have a podcast version of this video available. If you'd like to take this podcast version with you anywhere you want to go, simply go to simplenotshallow.com where you can download it, or you can subscribe to the Simple Not Shallow podcast through the podcast service of your choice. You know, Stitcher, Spotify, iTunes, whichever one you prefer. Then you can take this with you when you're driving your car, going to work, walking your dog, whenever, wherever, however. Well, thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I'll catch you next time. <laughs> hmm. That really is a good cup of coffee. <laughs>